For those of you who have been around me for any length of time, you might say, wow, CJ, this is an echo. I've heard this before. And maybe you have. I think it's something we have to keep coming back to because it's one of the foundational tenets of Metal Motivation and the Life Domination Online Coaching Program. But again, I think people are still confused for the most part about the idea of purpose, about the idea of calling, about the idea of direction in life. Because I think we see so much in storytelling. I think we see so much in film and television about um, people's purpose or calling. And we tend to romanticize these things. It's not a bad thing to do. You should be living out a story, so to speak. It, the way we should feel about these things is, you know, that there is a, be a beginning, a midpoint, and an end to our life. There is a story of our life. There's nothing bad about that. But I think a lot of people can look at others and think, wow, they have a purpose. Wow, they have a calling. Wow, they have a direction, but I don't have that. Right? And then they, they buy into the beliefs that they've been taught of biologically or historically or what have you. And they just, they're this spinning ball out in the middle of the universe. And we're just all here by accident. And I'm not here to debate that particular theory. However, there is a psychological and a philosophical net effect to it. And I think our wiring wars against it. I think we war against it. I don't think we want to live like that. I don't think we want to feel like we're that insignificant. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think because we walk around saying things like we deserve it and I deserve better and all of this. Well, if you're just something floating around in the universe, right? No different than a piece of dirt. Well, then what does anybody deserve? What meaning does anything have? Well, again, you might subscribe to those things on paper, but you don't operate that way. You don't want people to treat you that way. You don't want the law of the jungle. <laughs> I guarantee you, you don't want that. So that argument aside, let's just talk about what we mean then, or a better way maybe to look at the idea of purpose and calling. And I would say, stop looking outside of yourself, start looking inside of yourself. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about something mystical. I'm not talking about navel gazing, picking lint out of your navel to find your deeper self. No, I'm talking about the tangible things in life. Again, as I said in the first episode, working from the stuff that we can prove. Let's begin there and then work back to something greater. Well, what do we have that we can prove? What do we have that's empirically determined? Well, that would be our interests. That would be our talents, our gifts, our abilities, our knowledge, our experience. This, these are the things that operate within us that are unique to us. Other people may have similar giftings, but they are still unique to us. You know, I marvel sometimes, like I have a neighbor, for example, who's way into remote control cars. He's older than I am. He's retired, but he is like completely into these very customized, expensive remote control cars and they go out and race them. It's serious. He's got like a tr painted tr truck and he's built a shed and he makes them people order custom designed um, parts and assemblies from him. And he ships them all over the world and he'll drive off with his buddies and they'll be gone for a couple of days in another city in these races. And man, it's a serious, serious thing. I don't have any interest. Not only do I not have an interest, I have no interest whatsoever in what he does. And guess what? He's got no interest in what I do. But it's showing his mechanical ability. It's showing his sense of patience. It's a passion of his. It wasn't his job. It wasn't his job that he retired from. No, nope, but it's, it's his passion. It's what he loves doing. Well, why is he different than me? Well, because we're wired differently. But what's he doing? He's maximizing his life. Who knows how many people he's met, how many friends and professional relationships he's created. He's making a difference in the world. Here's a retired guy making a difference in the world simply by following his passion off of something that most of society would think is insignificant, remote control cars. Well, there's a whole lot of people that remote control cars is about as serious as some people take professional football, okay? And those people take that pretty serious too, right? It, it's important to people. We should be in a society that is so luxurious and so safe 
where we do have the time to be able to, you know, pursue our hobbies. The problem, as I've said in the past, is the luxury has made us lazy. That's the problem. And so we're not working as hard because everything is so easy. But you need to maximize your life, and that's the sacred duty. The sacred duty is, is to the things about your life that are proven, that we can test, that we can see, that are readily discernible, right? And that's going to be your gifts, talents, abilities, interests, all of these things. You have to take them seriously, and you have to fulfill them. They are the things that determine purpose. They are the things that determine calling. They are the things that determine your life direction. Now, I'll see people often online talk about um, quitting their job and pursuing something else. And it's a good thing to do, okay, um, if you have a plan for it. But sometimes you may be in a season where you have to do both, where you have to keep that day job that kind of pays the bills. It's not your passion, right? <laughs> You'd rather be doing the other thing, but it's just not where you are right now. So you do what you have to do to pay the bills with your day job, and then you use your spare time to pursue the other things, right? To develop that side business, to develop that hobby that you have. And it may be that you spend the rest of your life that way. And some people are content that way. They're like, you know what? I'm willing to do my job. I'm used to it. I know it. I love, I love the people. I'll go to work. I, that doesn't bother me. So long as I have the time to pursue these other interests. There are people who volunteer right? On weekends and sometimes during the week, helping with certain charities, helping at their church, helping at a lodge, helping in the school system, helping at a particular cause, right? They invest themselves. I know guys who run um, marathons and things like that. They all do it for causes and they're all involved in the community or the chamber of commerce or what have you. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all of these things. These are, these are all the sacred duty that you have to yourself, if you have an interest, you should take it seriously. If you have an interest or a, or a passion, man, you should take that seriously. You should develop it. Bring it into another level. Get out of this plateau and take things up a notch. That's the responsibility that you have to yourself, and it's the best way to discern purpose in your life. Can you dig that? I hope you can.